volcanoes in terms of ways they can kill you. Okay, but we're going to start first with some volcano basics. Um, <clears throat> there are active, dormant, and extinct volcanoes. Um, I would assume you're at least somewhat familiar with that. An active one is has current volcanic activity and or currently erupting. Um, that does not mean that it has to be erupting right at that moment, but that there's some kind of volcanic go, uh, activity going on, such as geysers or a um, little bit of outgassing, various different volcanically related functions. A dormant volcano does not have any current eruptions or any current activity, but has before and might again. And now we're talking about a time frame of like maybe 100 years ago, maybe even more like hundreds of thousands of years ago, but could still possibly be active again. Now, an extinct volcano had activity in the past but it never will again. And that's because an extinct volcano has completely lost its mechanism for volcanic activity. And we'll be talking about the two mechanisms here. Um, next. Okay. The two different volcanic mechanisms, the things that cause volcanic activity. Number one is a plate boundary. And this we've talked about and it is the most logical thing for volcanoes. Um, but when there is a plate boundary that causes volcanoes, not all plate boundaries do, um, but basically two out of three of them do. Uh, anyway, this will be a chain of active and or dormant volcanoes, a chain as in a line. Like right here, we see a line of these volcanoes. Um, and this is either at a convergent plate boundary where the plates are coming together or at a divergent boundary where they are pulling apart. Some examples of this would be Japan, which is actually very much like what we're seeing in this um, uh, image right here, this diagram right here. And that is a divergent, sorry, convergent boundary because there's one coming in and the other sinks down. The Andes Mountains in <clears throat> uh, South America are also convergent. Um, the Cascade Mountains in the Western United States, you know, I'd have to look at a map again, and I didn't mark it. I'm not sure. The Mid-Atlantic Ridge is a ridge in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, and that is a uh, divergent boundary where they're spreading apart. And then the Himalayas, as we say it, or the Himalayas, um, as is said by people who live in the area. Anyway, uh, the Himalayas are a convergent boundary and are volcanically active. Now, that is a tectonic boundary that would be a mechanism to cause the volcanic activity um, because either as the one plate is coming down, it creates this extra melt and pressure, which erupts off of the plate that did not subduct down underneath or at a divergent boundary where they're coming apart it's basically creating a an open rift um that brings that magma closer to the surface um <clears throat> such as at the mid-atlantic ridge uh there's also some places in africa um in like kenya where that is happening yeah. Okay, the other volcanic mechanism is something called a mantle plume. And I'm putting a question mark there because this is one of those ideas of, well, are we right about this? Is that really where it comes from? Because guess what, y'all? It's way down there in the earth and we can't get down there. Uh, we can only collect seismic data. Anyway, at a hot spot, there is one active volcanic area and then a chain of extinct volcanoes. Perfect example is the island of Hawaii. Um, the island of Hawaii in the state of Hawaii is the active volcanic area. Um, then the rest of the volcanic, I'm sorry, the rest of the Hawaiian islands are extinct. They are absolutely extinct. They are not going to erupt again because they are no longer on top of this hot spot. Now, this hot spot is the volcanic mechanism. And when we talk about a mantle plume, we're talking about from like way deep down, if down here is the core of the earth and the mantle, like is there some kind of plume 
of extra hot activity coming and rising to the surface here. So those are your two mechanisms of volcanoes. And I will ask you a question about this in bell work. And basically, you're going to look at a map. And on the map, there's either chains of active volcanoes or simple dots, standalone dots of active volcanoes. If it's a standalone dot, it's a hot spot. If it's a line, a chain, it's a plate boundary. Okay, and that's how you answer that question um, in the Canvas quiz. Now, what is Iceland exactly? Um, and whether or not it is a plate boundary or a hot spot. Okay, um, we're actually going to come back to that. I, mm, hold on, something else I want to teach you before we answer that. There are two types of eruptions. The first type of eruption is called effusive, and this is a lava eruption. This is what most folks think about when they think of a volcanic eruption. They picture lava and lava flowing out. That is an effusive eruption. The other type of eruption is explosive. During an explosive eruption, there is ash and whatnot. We will later talk about what the whatnot is, but other things than just ash that could be in this cloud. Now, the ash clouds are generally ginormous. Looking at this picture, here's the volcano, which is already the size of a volcano. Check out this ash cloud relative to that volcano itself. I mean, this ash cloud is easily three, four, five times more voluminous than the volcano itself. Now, okay, these two types of eruptions and whether or not the volcano will have this type or this type and whether or not Iceland is a plate boundary or a hot spot is all related, so I'm getting back to that. But it all comes from these factors that affect which type of eruption. Now, the way to read this chart, the eruption type, an effusive eruption, some volcanoes have both, or an explosive eruption. Now, the big pieces of that determine this are number one, what type of lithospheric plate? Now, don't freak out when you hear lithospheric plate. I mean tectonic plate. Wh which type of edge of a tectonic plate is this? Is it an oceanic plate or is it a continental plate? So is it a land-based edge of a tectonic plate or a, uh, an ocean-based edge of a tectonic plate? Now, an oceanic um, place, well, this is not a plate boundary, but an oceanic plate having eruptions would be Hawaii. That is a certain type of uh, magma called basaltic, also called mafic. Its viscosity is thin. Don't worry about what these things mean. It has a low gas content in the magma and so is effusive. It just kind of oozes out. Um, then the other, the opposite is a fully continental eruption, such as Yellowstone. And Yellowstone is in the middle of a continent, as you should know. Um, its magma type is granitic or felsic. Its viscosity is a very thick magma, and it has a higher gas content, which makes it explosive. Let me explain about that gas content. This mostly comes from some amount of water being mixed into the magma. And now think about explosives, bombs, guns, all that horrible stuff. But my point is the water in the magma, what will happen to it? What will happen to water in really hot conditions? Exactly, it turns into a gas. So the water leads to a gas content. Now that gas becomes the explosive power for the volcano. So that uh, evaporated water, if you could even call it evaporated, anyway, evaporated water in the magma becomes the boom, behind the magma. So when it does erupt, it just absolutely cataclysmically goes bonkers and haywire and produces these massive clouds like this. Now, we will talk about this shortly, actually a second video, but this is a lot more dangerous than that. So anyway, these explosive volcanoes are highly just, Oh, big time mess you up kind of mamas, okay? 
Now, I want you to really kind of put, put this together here that a continental sort of scenario will have an explosive eruption. An oceanic scenario will have an effusive eruption. And then there are things that are an ocean continent continental boundary and can have either eruption or both, like the Cascades Mountains um, in the Western U.S. This is uh, kind of the to the edge of the the never gets soggy uh, Western edge of the Rockies, um, the Eastern edge of California, um, some of the states along. If you just kind of draw a line straight up from California, um, or where some of these Cascades are. Anyway. Um, okay, but my point is oceanic, effusive eruption, continental, explosive eruption. Now, let's go back and talk about Iceland here for a moment. Iceland is in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, up there in the northern part of the Atlantic Ocean. The Mid-Atlantic Ridge runs through it. The Mid-Atlantic Ridge is a divergent plate boundary. The North American plate is pulling away to the west. The Eurasian plate is pulling away to the east. This is a known plate boundary. Now take a look at, of the volcanoes in Iceland, of which there are over 130, they're just not all shown on this map, but of the known volcanoes and marked on here, the active ones, there's greater than eight or so, there are right here and those basically form a line of sorts but i'll write along the mid-atlantic ridge because of plate boundary so like this is definitely cha-ching a plate boundary a line of active volcanoes here's where things get crazy okay um this right here is westman island or as said in the icelandic language vestmanayar which is just Iceland for Westman Island. This had an effusive eruption. Um, oh gosh, I want to say that was the 90s, but an effusive eruption, lava-based. Okay, lava-based, and so a um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, oceanic type plate boundary. Okay, all right. Now, right here, this is the volcano known as Eyjafjallajökull. Try saying that, Eyjafjallajökull. Now, sidebar, the reason Icelandic people make fun of the rest of us for not being able to pronounce that is because it is simply three words, island, mountain, glacier, strung together. So it's kind of funny to Icelanders that the rest of the world can't really pronounce that. But Eyja, island, Fjatla, mountain, Jökull. Glacier. And I did say Yerkos, there's a different, they have different sounds, different letters in their alphabet. So anyway, but okay, here's the thing. This erupted, uh, when was that? It Sometime in the 2010s. Someone, I'll have to fact check those. But anyway, sometime in the 2010s, and this was a an explosive eruption. Explosive eruption. Like a continental place. What? This is the oceanic edge of the North American plate. This is an oceanic edge of the Eurasian plate. An explosive eruption here. What? This is very interesting to geologists. If this is an explosive eruption, the thought is, and the general consensus here, is that Iceland is also a hot spot. And that this hot spot might actually be pulling up the granitic magma, the granitic or felsic type magma, the kind that can produce this sort of eruption. I mean, obviously it is since we had that kind of eruption, but that this might actually be the beginning of a new continent. It's also interesting to just consider Iceland along the mid-Atlantic ridge of the entire mid-Atlantic ridge, which is volcanically active, it is all pretty deep under the water. Iceland is the only place on this mid-Atlantic ridge where there is actually um, an island, like land that has breached the surface. So that also suggests there's something more going on here. And basically the thought is that, you know, hundreds of thousands of years from now, this is going to be a much more 
massive piece of land. It's pretty small right now, but that it's going to be getting bigger as this is both a plate boundary and a hotspot. So Iceland is quite a geologic gem and a very exciting place to go as a, uh, for geology. Can you only imagine how geeked out I am when I go? I've been there once, absolutely geeked out. We will talk more about that um, coming up soon, but hopefully you guys can come with me to Iceland someday. All right, now we're going to talk about ways the volcano can kill you, but I'm going to create